Shall we bow our heads in a word of prayer? Father, again we come in the precious name of Jesus, asking for a new anointing from heaven and for divine illumination upon the word. Speak to our hearts once again. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have your Bibles, I'm reading from both the book of Joel, the second chapter, and the book of Acts. I'll read this in Joel first, then I'll turn to the book of Acts, the second chapter. Starting in the book of Joel, the second chapter, starting with the 28th verse. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants, upon the handmaidens, in those days will I pour out my spirit, and I will show wonders in heaven and in the earth, blood, fire, pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. I want to read that in the book of Acts, the second chapter. We find when the Holy Spirit came. It says, and when the first verse, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven, now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. I'll jump over all the languages there down to the third verse, the 12th verse. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? Others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, You men of Judea, and all ye that dwell in Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these men are not, for these are not drunken, as you suppose, seeing as but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. That's what I just read to you. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions, your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants, on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord come, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his precious word. This that I've read to you from the prophet Joel, and also in last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, that there evidently is something different about last days. Something different the Bible speaks about the early and latter rain, and that early rain came on Pentecost, and so there is a latter rain to come, which will be similar to that, only greater in degree. Now, there will be a moving of God's Spirit that has never been known before in the history of the world. Well, uh, uh, that is, there's going to be something special. It concerns the last great harvest. That is, the harvest spiritually. The last great awakening will be the work of the Holy Spirit. Uh, I hope we can get a hold of this. It's not going to be the work of men but the work of the Holy Spirit. God will use people, but he is not dependent on any one person to bring it. I hope we get our hold of this. These last days are so special and so great 
that it's going to be the work of the Holy Spirit and God will use people, but he is not dependent upon anyone. Now, if you'll get a hold of that, I uh, trust that sinks deep into our heart. This is going to be the work of the Holy Spirit. God can use anyone and God has given us you know, God does little unusual things, but a lot of times it's to tell us something. That's why in this story, little story of Sammy Morris out of Africa, that's more than a little story. God is telling us something. He's telling us that he can use, raise up and use anybody he wants to. That out of that darkness of Africa, this little boy, Sammy Morris, rank heathenism, knew nothing about Jesus or the Holy Spirit. And God raises this boy up and brings him, you know, to the mission field. You know the story. He finally gets to New York. He wants to know more about the Holy Spirit. And when he gets to New York to find out more about the Holy Spirit, we find out that he knew more about the Holy Spirit than the teachers. I want you to get all of this. Because what I'm saying is that this work is so mighty of God that he can do anything with anybody. And if he wants to do it, he can speak through anyone he wants to. That we can, we've got to keep our eyes completely on God in every situation because these last days is going to be the work of the Holy Spirit. It will be God's Spirit. And the book of Acts could be called... As someone said, really, instead of the Acts of the Apostles, it could be the Acts of the Holy Spirit. Now, the purpose of Pentecost, of course, the purpose, I want us to look, first of all, the purpose of Calvary was to get us to Pentecost. Calvary is marvelous, but that was to get us to Pentecost. And the purpose of Pentecost is for the great harvest. This is what God has in mind. Pentecost means 50 or 50 days after Easter was their, the Jewish celebration of the harvest, great harvest, and so the Holy Spirit came on that day to signify the harvest that God plans is going to bring. So the Jews celebrated harvest time, and God planned Calvary, and he has also planned the harvest just as much as he planned Calvary. Hundreds of years before Jesus came, he gave prophecies concerning Jesus, and they were all fulfilled. He was to be numbered with the transgressors. That was fulfilled. He made his grave with the rich. He, his hands were pierced, and his feet were pierced. Well, they cast lots for his garment. Not a bone of him shall be broken. Same as like in Exodus when they ate the lamb, not a bone was to be broken. They looked on him whom they pierced. Jesus said, I must be lifted up from the earth. Jesus had to be lifted up. Now, you see the significance of this, how that God is in control of Calvary. He had to be lifted up, and the only way in the world that could be done was for the Romans to do it. That's why we have the Romans in here even on this situation that was against the Jewish law to crucify. They couldn't crucify him. God had to be in charge of that to bring the Romans in to have them lift him up. I want you to see God was in charge of this thing. Even so, God is going to be in charge of the Holy Ghost awakening. So in Luke, for the fourth chapter, they tried to take Jesus to the brow of a hill and throw him over. They could not do that because he had to be lifted up. God controlled Calvary. And so he will be in control of the latter reign of the of Pentecost when it comes. So the main purpose of Pentecost is the harvest, and God sent his Holy Spirit to reap a great harvest. In Peter's sermon here on the Pentecost, we find, of course, two parts. The first part, Peter stood up, and of God's Spirit being poured out happened, but the last part of that has never yet come to pass. That's coming to pass in the last in the, in the great awakening before Jesus come, that of the sun being darkened and the moon to blood, uh, before that great and terror, notable day of the Lord, 
I was thinking as I was reading even, or not reading, I'm listening to this Carl, and I forget his name, this great astronomer. It's supposed to be a world astronomer, world famous. What was his name? Carl Sagan. Yes, that's what I wanted. Carl Sagan. And uh, he was saying on TV that he expects that someday an asteroid is going to hit this earth. And it will be so big. And when it does, he said it will send up a cloud of dust that will darken the sun for four months. Now, what, that's, that's not a preacher preaching. That, that, those are your scientists. So that, and then I was also reading, and I was, uh, Harry Foster from England, well, has this wonderful, had this wonderful little magazine, I don't know if it's still in publication or not, of Toward the Mark. And he gives the illustration, or interprets the Luke, the 15th chapter, of the woman searching for the lost coin. That coin she was searching for was lost, and it says that she swept the house until she found it. And then she said, Rejoice with me, for that which is lost is found. And he's mentioning how that the houses in those days weren't particularly clean places. Cattle sometimes, I mean animals, roamed through the house, chickens and so forth, and reeds and things on the floor. And when she started to sweep the house, I want to tell you, it wasn't a very pleasant place. Dust flew, drawers were open, closets were emptied, and uh, maybe meals missed, and no one was at ease when that house was being searched. I want you to get a hold of this. When the Holy Ghost awakening comes, there's nobody going to be at ease when this thing happens, when the search is on for God's heritage. Brother, everybody's going to be upset and disturbed, and uh, houses will be turned upside down. And uh, I was telling, my wife was talking about the idea of communal living. Uh, I'm not for that, and some have advocated it. But I want you to know something. We may come back to it. Brother, your house may be turned upside down. If God had sent the early church out, scattered them everywhere, preaching, they stopped in houses, and you may have a dozen people in your house sleeping at night, and you may have to feed them too. You can't say, well, I'm not, uh, what we would like to do, we'd like to have a great revival meeting and then, <laughs> and then go home and have a cup of coffee. Yes. You're not going to do that. <laughs> no, indeed. You're going to be slaving and working in your own kitchen trying to feed God's servants and spreading out everywhere. Everything. While that sweeping is going to be going on, I'll tell you, your house is going to be upset and everybody's along with it and you may not even be home because God is going to be in charge of this. I like what Harry Foster said. He said, will God take a world chaos to find and recover his lost heritage? Will he do this? I want to tell you something, dear ones. The Holy Ghost awakening is going to be beyond anything we have ever imagined or thought. And the Holy Spirit's going to be in charge. He's going to be directing it. And I am thankful for this. So God spoke speaks in the last days of the sun being darkened and the moon turned to blood before that great and notable day of the Lord comes, so that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The Holy Ghost awakening uh, will jump across all denominational lines and cultural barriers. Uh, if we can get that out of our system now, or we'll not be ready for a Holy Ghost awakening. Uh, it will not or may not change our form of worship. Pentecost did not make the Jews Gentiles. I hope we get all this. He did not call them out and make them Gentiles. They were still Jews. They still went to the temple. They still worshiped God. Paul himself purified himself and went into the temple and he didn't feel it was necessary, but he wasn't opposed to it because it really didn't make any difference. And a lot of things don't make any difference. As a matter of fact, they say that it takes missionaries to go to foreign fields usually several years to quit trying to make the natives Americans because we have a feeling that America is Christian. American isn't Christian. 
And so it takes them a while to let the Holy Spirit work in native cultures and native countries and still bring out and worship Christ and, and him and quit trying to make them Americans. And we need to quit trying to make Jews Gentiles and quit trying to make anybody else Americans. The Holy Spirit is going to do a work that will baffle us and, and mystify us. So the Holy Spirit is not trying to make Jews Gentiles, even the same as circumcision. They finally came to it in that day. They said, all right, God didn't change it. Let the Jews keep being circumcised. The Gentiles, you don't need to. He didn't change any of that. And he's still the same today. Mother Teresa, I think of that dear saint. I don't know if this will upset you or not, but when she prays to Mary and fingers her beads, I want you to know that God's not going to try to change that. Now you stick with me. You're going to either stick with me or not like me. One of the two. And God's not going to try it. God doesn't care whether she prays to Mary. And ultimately, she's looking to Jesus. She's saying, carry the message to Jesus. And she's not glorifying Mary. And God's not going to try to change it. Why well, try to, and a Catholic, and the Holy Ghost awakening comes, I want to tell you, all denominations will be buried underneath simply the Holy Ghost and Jesus. Jesus will be the center of it. The Holy Spirit will make Jesus the center of everything. And he's not going to try to go around and convert Catholics or Jews or anyone else, but simply to proclaim Jesus, the Son of the living God. So Mary and Mother Teresa, one of God's great saints, Jesus is still the center of her life. And unless we can be flexible in these areas, God may not be able to use us. Uh, of the, in the Holy Ghost awakening, Jesus will be the center and not any denomination or any doctrine or any type of worship. He said, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved, whether that's high church or low church or Pentecostalism or Catholics or Gentiles or Jews or Protestants, whoever and whoever he is and wherever you are, God will hear your prayer. If you're in a sanctuary someplace that doesn't agree with my type of religion, God will hear you. If you'll call on the name of the Lord, he'll hear you and not try to change you to make anything else. God is a great God. So as we look forward to Holy Ghost awakening, this is going to be the work of the Holy Spirit, not to get our eyes on men of any kind, but to look to Jesus and the Holy Spirit will make Jesus the center of it all. We've been glorifying Jesus in these songs this morning. It's been marvelous to me. I've rejoiced in it in heart and soul. And then Peter goes on to say, save yourself from this untoward generation or this corrupt generation. I'll tell you if there was ever a day and when that needs to be preached, it certainly is today. Save yourself from this corrupt generation. Instead of accepting it and saying, well, it's just the times and things are different, I want to tell you it's a corrupt generation and the Holy Spirit still says, save yourself from this corrupt generation. Thank you, Brother Martin. Pastor Tony, would you pray for us, please? Heavenly Father, we thank Thee, Lord, for thank you. the privilege of this message today. Thank you for this message, thank Lord. Lord, that it continues to... Help us to see, Lord, that oh, we God. have a need of Jesus in our hearts. And, Lord, we pray that you'll help us to get our focus on thee today. Oh, yes. Help us, Lord, to mm -hmm. look beyond the situations Ooh. and our analyzations and our opinions. Mm -hmm. But, Lord, Jesus. help us to take thee seriously. Yes, Lord. And so, Lord, we thank thee today for a message that will point us closer to thee. We pray, Lord, that you'll help us to embrace it within our hearts, not just to take it within our no. intellectual being, but, Father, oh, help Jesus. us, Jesus, to truly get it into the center of our living. We pray, Lord, that you'll help us to learn to love thee more today. Help us, Lord, Lord to we do. need more about Jesus. More you, we need Jesus. more, Father, of your love. Mm -hmm. We need more, Father, of your teaching. Yes, and Lord. we pray, Father, you will help us to endeavor yes, to become Jesus. more Christ-like. Like we pray, you. Jesus, you'll help us to truly get a hold of thee in such a way that we'll be prepared in these last Dear days Father. to truly walk with thee and talk with thee, to be on time in thy kingdom. We thank Thee, Father, and we praise You today for all that You've done for us through this music, Lord, through this message, and may You continue to bless throughout the rest of this service. We pray in His name. Amen. Amen. Tony, before you give announcements, we'll sing a couple of stands of something for, for which the Lord's led. Richard, used to be in the prelude quite often, but it's there again today. Open my eyes that I may see. Let's sing the first two stanzas of it, for we want our eyes open to God's Word to us. 
in these last days so we can be prepared for His working in the way He has it for us. 133, Richard, have a stand. Yes, sir. feel about as dead as a doornail. And I, when Be Beverly was in tune with the Holy Spirit, I thought, you know, I am so out of tune. And, and, uh, and if Bob and you want to say nothing, I'm going to. I, we were just talking about this exact same thing in the office a while ago. And, and, I, and I was just thinking to myself, as Brother Morgan was sharing, you know, I was t talking to Bob and Gary that, that Noah told it over and over and over for 120 years, and it just seemed like idle words. Yeah, Ooh. yeah, yeah, we've heard that before. We've heard that before. But I'm telling you, God is speaking through Brother Morgan. He, God is prophesying through him today. And, and I feel dry and barren, but I, I know in my heart that God's speaking to us. God yes. is really trying to open our eyes and trying to get us to see. Because I tell you, it's, it's not too far away, I don't believe. Well, we're looking and, for uh, And I, I can't get over the fact we, we, were, we were stirred out this morning about the very things he was talking about. And uh, God surely is speaking through him today. Your prayer is, and ours will be open, our eyes that we might see. Stanzas 1 and 2.